Uh, Joel says he can see us moving and talking. Uh, that's good. So we're we're live in in uh, Facebook. Well, let's see if we can get live into YouTube as well. So it's going to be a different, uh, whole different code. But let's see if we're on. Pop up chat. Let me do this. Marilyn mentioned, did we do we have pancakes? Yes, though we didn't do we have pancakes, did we? No, we didn't. No, we had, we had too much of a big tea to have pancakes. Um, did you guys have pancakes? And if so, did you have any special um, special ones or just a plain old lemon and sugar? Um, gravy on pancakes. Discuss. Well, I think it's like you're just like Yorkshire pudding, isn't it? I think same, so. Same ingredients. We're right. We are back. We're back in. Um, YouTube, we're back in Facebook, I think. Hopefully, um, people will find us again because... Um... Unfortunately, during that time, uh, Sherry did Paul at a stripper dance. So I'm afraid you've missed it. You missed it. Sherry came in and she did a little bit of a strip. Um, I think she said she tripped over the cables around the back. So that would be why we lost connection. So sorry about that, everybody. We're ever so sorry about that. It's like, it's our internet connection. Some It's... It's... A bird flaps its wings in Japan and we lose our connection. A dog has a, a cat has a shit in the gimmel and we lose connection. Uh, here we go. You, Joel says, I think YouTube is just going to be a newer link live. Just had a notification. Brilliant. So hopefully people are finding us again. Um, Paul, we this is your birthday. We didn't want to um, have problems. Hopefully Paul McFarlane can find us um, and can join us again. So Eurovision. Uh, Alicia Dixon Wright was rehearsing next door to us when Alan, when I was directing Alan in a play, yeah, um, and she was rehearsing the boy does nothing, uh, like the dance routine and all of that stuff. Mm. Uh, so that was fun. So we have a connection to Alicia Dixon Wright. We used to drink in the same pub as Graham Norton dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. But we went to see Graham Norton live. We've seen see him live a few when times. When he filmed one of his shows. And I think my brother might have seen him in the corridors. Yes. On but, that same day But we filming. did used to drink with um, his dog walker, didn't we? And we met yeah. Graham Norton's dogs. Good a house. few times. Uh, and Hannah Waddingham has met both of us and has uh, seen both of us perform on stage. So yeah. he came to see both of us in, in theatre. Beautiful. Uh, in London. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. my goodness. A beautiful. stunning woman. Yeah, beautiful lady. Like an Amazonian beauty. Tall, curvaceous, good soul. Just really nice woman. Really yeah. nice. Um, Jason Darcy says Mel Giedroich is doing the commentary. That'd be quite fun. Which is great. I love Mel You need somebody with a good sense of humour, don't you, really? Yeah. To have a good laugh at the costumes and all the bizarreness. Mel Giedroich is one of my secret friends, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. We have a little group of people that would be our friends. It's like if you suddenly like met up, I don't know, in a lift or in a hotel and suddenly got talking, you'd get, you know, the friendship would then come out of that, wouldn't Mel it? Mel Giedroich is one of mine. Lisa Tarbuck's another. Yeah. Sue Perkins? Yeah, you said yeah. Sue. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, Darren Bramley says, Graham Norton pushed past him in the cafe today. Oh, what a light, light live with Pam. <laughs> Did yeah. you reach by you to get some pastry? Get pass by. I'm... I'm not having a sweet. Um, Joshua Spencer says he's a stunning woman as well. We'll wait until Pride, Joshua, when you get that whole outfit on. Oh, yeah. We want photos of that, do you? Um, so, in honour of Paul McFarlane... Is he in, though? Is he in the room? He is. He is. Oh, there he is. oh, there he is. Thank you, Alan and Jamie, and all the Gigaboxes for all your birthday wishes. My isolation family will forever be in my heart. I'm feeling very emotional. Oh, bless your little cotton socks. Well, Paul, this commercial break is especially for you, and we will be back on the other side of this. There's no place like here for a decent pint of beer. I've been away eight years. But don't shed your tears. Right back where I belong. Although you haven't changed while I Girls are hip, I really dig the styles they wear. And American girls, with the way they talk, they knock me out when I fly there. 
Latin stewardesses really make you feel all right. And the German girls really do their best to keep their pants and girls warm at night. I've been all around this great big world and I've flown with all kinds of girls. But I can't wait to get back to Gatwick to the cutest girls in the world. I wish they all could be Caledonian. I wish they all could be Caledonian. I wish they all could be Caledonian girls. British Caledonian, we never forget you have a choice. Gosh, you know, it's one of those ads. Lots of kids with white teeth and giant shoulder pads. It's not. bunch of Scottish adverts. You know, I love that last bit. Especially for Paul. Especially for Paul. Iron Brew, Caledonian and Mrs. Matt. Yeah, Alan was saying, why are all, why are all the passengers on Caledonian Airways Horrible just like businessmen. CD old businessmen? I don't know. What was it? What's it about? I would imagine. Is it like business flying? Was it just like a local, like London to... London to Scotland flight or something. Can you imagine like the uh, or the Usherettes would be re- the Usherettes. The Usherettes. The, um, cabin crew. The cabin crew would be really like, like oh god, here they all are. <laughs> Stinky businessmen. They wouldn't be Le- tuck- letching. Tucking them up. Was Toby Jones in the second Caledonian ad? No, it wasn't, but I know exactly who you mean, Gabby Chassis. That'd be banned now, that advert, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, they couldn't do it now. Oh, um, is the airline still going now? Will Venus is here. Will Venus and uh, they say that their favourite soft drink is Iron Brew. Oh. Their favourite drink is Iron Brew. I don't know if I like Iron Brew. Do you like Iron, Iron um, Brew? I'm sure you also um, Sherry Stump's ASMR. Oh yeah. Advert. Um, can you imagine um, Will's voice? Oh, Will and Sherry doing ASMR. No, but together. Will opening a, opening a like a, an, Iron, an Iron, Brew. Iron Brew and pouring it into a glass while talking. Made in Scotland from gutters. Be lovely. I'd love to listen to that. <laughs> We love Will Venus's voice. We do. We love it, Will. We can't wait for the podcast. Um, what did I say the other day that made you laugh? Oh, was it? Was it? Um, <laughs> was it Nutella? <laughs> oh, what was it? I said Alan bought some Nutella yesterday for pancakes, and I sort of just plonked it on the um, counter, thinking he'd go, "Ooh, Nutella, nice on toast," which is what I th- would think. He went, "Ooh, we used to have that in France." <laughs> 
fresh, uh, freshly spread on pan, <laughs> and we, followed we, by a, w- a glass of fresh cow's <laughs> ole. I said we used to have it on crepes in France every morning, but we did. It was lovely. Um, so we have a special uh, in honour of, of course, the birthday ball boy. We have a special. <laughs> A special top five. We have chosen our top five from Scotland. Our top five Scottish things. Um, So it's our top five Scottish things. Um, One of mine was going to be, like, this is a near miss. Have you got any near misses? I don't know. I don't know what yours are. One of my near misses was was, uh, Tunnock's Tea Cakes. Oh, right, no. Nearly Tunnock's Tea Cakes. Another of my top uh, top <laughs> near misses was Jock Stewart. <laughs> Snap like a twig. She fell down those stairs like a hot water bottle, Judy. <laughs> so does anyone remember Jock Stewart? He was nearly uh, he was nearly my uh, one of my top uh, Scottish things. Let's have a look. Top Scottish things. Do you want to go first or should I? Uh, you can go first. I'll go want. first. Coming in at number five for me is... What have we got? Oh, we saw these not long ago, did we? <laughs> the Incredible Fran and Anna. Was it in the year or last Christmas we saw these? Um, I don't even know when we saw them, but they are incredible. I'm a bit gutted that their records, the budget series, because <laughs> they're better than that. <laughs> Neptune budget series. Look at that balloon that's fast approaching Anna's behind. And one's about to fall. Yeah. And they said, um, Fran and Anna, what kind of balloons do you want? Oh, long ones. Uh, we want long ones. I don't know why they're deep voiced. <laughs> I'm going to show you a bit of Fran and Anna now. Hopefully this is going to work for you. Um, so I have to do a little bit of um, muting us. So hopefully I'll be able to get us back in a minute. We get away. We like to get away to see the world, but oh, we also like to come home yes. to Bonnie Scotland. <laughs> you're very quiet, Anna. I'm so oh, feeling yes. you're being. Well, Fran, uh, she. I don't have to do much talking. Fran, I wind her up at the back, and she carries on. Well, what she's trying to tell you, she's a ventriloquist. Yes. I'm only mimey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you're both equally pleased to be BEMs. Oh, yes, very of much. Course. We're thrilled. We're very honoured. Yes, yes of that course. the Queen should honour us in that way. We're very, very honoured. Alan Mackay, BBC Reporting Scotland at Chatelarow with Fran. And Anna. Oh, oh, I Oh. A memorable day. Oh, and for oh, me too. You are so I've never met so such nice oh. British Empire medalists. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Very nice. Fran and Anna receiving the reward. That so is that. Fran and Anna. Now, if we uh, ever visit Paul, which we will, <laughs> we will be recreating that for you. We will dress as Fran and Anna. In fact, this outfit. I've got, I have an idea why Anna was so quiet. Why? Because that balloons. No, because Fran's teeth. Her. Fran had lovely teeth, and Anna had like. What, like, like Billy Bob's? <laughs> well, no, once she's quiet, the ones have their teeth done, the other one hasn't. So they come in as my number five. Uh, we don't know much about Fran and Anna, oh, but I'm a little be, bit obsessed they with They must them. be on the uh, on the YouTube, mustn't they? They have lots of songs that are called, like, things in Scottish dialect, which would annoy me a little bit, like, mm. Blay your kilt a boot. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, they are on the YouTube. In fact, I think this whole album is on the YouTube, The Incredible yeah. Fran and Anna. Yeah. Um, do you know what I forgot? Stephen. Oh, no, Stephen. Of course. Stephen Donardo. Stephen Donardo would be in our top five. Yeah. But do you know what I forgot that's Scottish? Someone's just reminded me. Well, I'll give you away that they're not in my top five. The Crankies. Oh, oh yeah, of course. I forgot that the Crankies were Scottish. Oh, poor Jeanette and Ian. They'll pop up in another top five. Well, they've popped up a lot, lot, haven't they, really? Let's have a look at Alan's top five. So, Alan, coming in at number five is... Scottish shortbread. (laughs) Oh, I love it. (laughs) Made from just a few ingredients. But, my God, that brings a smile to my face. Shortbread. A plate of bloody shortbread. A hot pot of tea. Oh, I'm yours. I'm not a big biscuit person, am I? Thank God for that. (laughs) A 
I can eat the bloody lot myself. There was a um, you got your, you got your shortbread in a wheel. It can be a round. It can be a <laughs> petticoat tail. It can be just a finger. But bloody hell. <laughs> you know, I li- I like it when you make me a nice streusel with a um, shortbread base. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Deconstructed shortbread. <laughs> streusel. <laughs> Mine said Stephen agrees that <laughs> Stephen Donardo should have been in the top five. Or oh, that shortbread's a good top five. Uh, MP loves a finger at Christmas. Uh, Cilla Black says, oh, a, good, a nice bit of good quality shortbread. And Will Venus says, oh, I love it with a hot sweet tea. I'll tell you what isn't on my list, which, which you just said, like, I wish I'd put on, was a kilt. Oh, oh a kilt. kilt. I used to have a kilt that oh, I looked no, well you, sexy no, you in. didn't. It was a skirt. It was a pleated <laughs> skirt. I went to the charity shop and I bought a kilt and bought it back and wore it for Alan, thinking, oh, you know, this will... This will get him going. A lovely, lovely kilt. I wore it with long socks and boots. Um, Alan came in and said, why are you wearing an old lady's skirt? Why are you wearing, why are you wearing a librarian's ki- uh, pleat skirt? It had one of them big safety pins on it. It was down to your shins. Kilts don't go down to your shins. <coughs> you thought I'd had a three-pound bargain, hadn't you? I, I, I did. Bought, I bought a kilt from a, from, a, from a bargain rail. My number four. So let's get to my number four. My number four is... Hazel McWitch from rent a um, I guess this might be kind of the first Scottish person I remember is Hazel McWitch. Um, it's such a beautiful Scottish accent. I don't know where it's from. It's like one of those real sing-songy Scottish accents. Now, I think the actress is called Molly Weir, and she's way more famous than just being Hazel mm. McWitch. Um, but yeah, Hazel McWitch is my... Uh, is my number four in my Scottish um, things. Super Gran? You don't really... She's not Super Gran. No, no, but Super Gran. Was she around at the same time? Super Gran would be later than Hazel McWitch, Rent-A-Ghost. You don't remember Rent-A-Ghost, do you, really? No, we weren't BBC, I don't think. Alan would love Rent-A-Ghost. Anne Emery is in Rent-A-Ghost, and mm. she's um, Campers Nichols. I've seen a bit on, on the internet, what, with Sue Nichols. But here she is, and Martin Hyde, both say she's the Flash Lady... Oh, from the adverts, Flash. Is she? she? She might be. I don't remember the Flash lady. Oh, yeah, there. Molly cleans baths without scratching. We are. Oh, there's, that's where the money came in. Um, Karen Avery had a Scottish boyfriend in the 70s. Wonder where he is now. Um, yep, she was the Flash lady. So, uh, mine, Molly Weir, a.k.a. Hazel McWitch, comes in at number four. Alan's number four in Scottish things is... Our Lulu. <laughs> now Lulu's been around for a while, but I fell in Lulu, fell in love with Lulu, um, because of the theme to "Say with Love." Oh, have you heard it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I She's lovely back then, Lulu. Yeah, it's a beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the film, but I love her. I love her theme tune of that. Nowadays, we we laugh because we we imagine that Lulu's slightly aggressive and um, is banned from supermarkets. I don't know why we think this. We once saw the uh, Morrison's <laughs> Christmas advert. <laughs> yeah. And they just seemed to film her outside. And I said, why isn't she going in? Because all the inside footage was of, like a close-up of a, a turkey or whatever. And I suddenly had this idea that she'd been banned. Because <laughs> she's, a, she, she she's a, aggressive a and a bit pissed and has been caught stealing tenants. Now, I have met Lulu. I've, I think I saw this the other week when her and a friend came to buy some tickets. Yes. And um, all there was left was two end of rows. And Lulu wasn't 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 really frigged off. She was a bit frigged off about it already. I don't think she wanted to go. Oh, we bet. Was she, was she a bit borderline aggressive? No, she was a bit like, you know when you've got a teenager like that? Oh. <laughs> so a friend was doing all the buying and purchasing. And she was sort of saying to Lulu, are you okay? I'm, yeah, that's really yeah, fine. I'm all right. <laughs> um... Sarah Green from Blue Peter was passive aggressive with me when she was um, when I served her once mm. at a box office. And of course, Lulu Eurovision, champagne for Lulu, champagne for Lulu. This um, might be why where the photo came from. The Eurovision photo, mm. yeah, we do. We both adore Lulu. Um, let's have a look. What is my number three? My number three is this is uh, this should amuse my mum. My number three is. What the hell is that? Wee Stuart Anderson. Now, Wee Stuart Anderson won a talent competition on Going Live. And he got his uh, prize from um, Bross. 
and he won with the biggest vote like ever because Nana's loved him. He was like this little six-year-old, six-year-old who sang Scottish songs. Um, and he does it a little bit too, um, he's too into it. And I've got a video to show you of Wee Stuart Anderson, um, which Alan will have never seen Wee Stuart Anderson. Let me just uh, click those buttons again. Video. It was quite low, wasn't it? He's what, his, for Stuart his, Anderson's uh, Yeah, that's his dad, album. his dad with a VHS camera in the local park. <laughs> One that you actually put the big tape now, in. Now, if you just put your hand and just cover the kilt bit on that bit. Well, I can't. What, I, sort of cover I it. Do it, it, it looks like he's recreating a scene from Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like it? He's, um... he's like after B. Smith, as she's escaped. <laughs> Come back, B. Smith! <laughs> Get, get back here! It's because of the little grey outfit. It's the grey outfit. It doesn't, and the little buttons on the. Um, let's see, it's got a little. Um, uh, fetch the lech. When we went on one of our summer holidays, he was doing a gig nearby, and by that time, he was. Because my brothers and me laughed about Stuart mm. Anderson a lot. I think they used to say I looked a bit like him. And uh, <laughs> he was about, maybe about 13. By that point, and he had his little photo like that, but he had a big, like, chunky Rolex on. Oh, so he'd obviously made a bit of money. A voice back to drop as well. <laughs> Don't know where you do But he sang, I think Paul said it here, he sang a song that was... Uh, he sang a fine wee lass, a bonny wee lass, a bonny wee Jenny McCall. Anyway. I can see that his record's not in the budget series, though. Not like Fran and Anna. Or Fran and Anna. So that is <laughs> my number three is uh, little wee Stuart Anderson. And uh, Bubble says, where is he now? David, my, my dad <laughs> says he's having to hold mum down. I don't know what, because she's getting up and bopping. Um, or because she's, <laughs> she's angry like Lulu outside well, Morrison's. Him. Right, Alan's number three. Let's have a look. There she is. We couldn't have a Scottish night without the good old Mrs. Bark, played by the wonderful Gwyneth Guthrie. Who um, sadly left us about like I think it was sometime last year. We saw just saw the video of the people singing "Return of the Mac" around her. Mm. Look at all that shit on the beach. Was there a clean up of the lock? <laughs> I keep forget. Somebody will have to remind me the name of where Take the High Road is. What that lock is yeah, called? Because I keep forgetting it. But I used to watch Take the High Road with my mum <laughs> when I was on like half term or where or, or summer holidays, and I was always gutted when the when the episode didn't feature Mrs. Mac. Was she never... She wasn't in all of them? No, she wasn't in all of them. Was she like Mrs Mangle? Yeah, if the storyline was about gossip or something, she'd be there. But sometimes it wasn't, you know, I'm sure. You know, all these soap stars sometimes have a holiday, don't they? Tracy Ann Cannon says that's Loss. Glendarock. Glendarock. And Loch Lomond. Glendarock. Loch Lomond Loss, that is. Loch Lomond, the village of Loss. Um, is that her hair? No, it's a hat. Oh, <laughs> But I was watching um, an episode of this on YouTube the other day, and um, it's a, it's the shop where Mrs. Mac obviously comes in. But they had like a couple of um, Acorn Antique extras in it. Oh, really? Yeah. And I think the lady behind the behind the counter, I can't remember what her name is, says like, "Don't go near all them sweets yourselves." And they sort of go. <laughs> was um that woman with the little flicky bob from Balamori in Take the High Road? Yeah, she was. What was she? Was um, she? I think she's a shopkeeper again. Maybe she's she just got a limited range. I know it's back on TV, isn't it? On one of the channels. It's on STV, says Jason Rigby. We're a little bit obsessed as well because um, yesterday on classic Coronation Street was the return of Julie Goodyear. So we're excited to watch tonight's because uh, it'll be the proper ones. Because yesterday she just got in a taxi and said, uh, 
I'm going to Weatherfield Cock, a pub called The Rover's Return. Do you know it? Paul says the um, village is called Loss. On the shores of Loch Lomond. Can you imagine if they just called it that? Welcome to Loss, Mrs. Mark. <laughs> um, so I've not really watched um, Take the High Road, but uh, we are planning a Take the High Road video, aren't we? You've just got to do your research. I've got to, go, got to get myself a big felt hat. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you going to be Mrs. Mack? Oh, you, you join. Okay, my number two, Jamie's number two is The High Life. I knew, um, I knew this would be one of your... I love it. This is a comedy series from, I guess, the very early 90s, um, starring Alan Cumming and Forbes Masson, who are the two in the centre there. They had a comedy act. I think it was called Barry and... Oh, someone help me. Their comedy duo, Barry and someone else. And they used to sing lovely little songs. Um, And they were all thespians. Anyway, they wrote this sitcom which is set on a plane that goes between London and uh, and Scotland. And uh, they're the little trolley dollies on it. I love the name of the... Um, the uh, yeah, Chief Stewardess. She's called Shona Sputtle. <laughs> they go, what's up with your puss, Shona Sputtle? And there's always, a bit, there's always a bit where people are getting on board and they're like, hello, hello. Um, the High Life was fabulous. Uh, there is a Eurovision episode of The High Life. And they record a song called Piff Paff Puff. <laughs> the only one I didn't like is the guy at the end, uh, the captain. I always thought his his part was a bit um, daftly written, didn't fit in. Um, but yeah, I loved The High Life. If you've never watched it, try and find it or just find the title sequence. I was going to play it on tonight, but I know we'll get nabbed for playing it. Oh, it's the biggest um, but would. it's brilliant. They do like a little uh, synchronised dance with the... Uh, the uh, airline. Siobhan Redmond was fab as Shauna Sputtle. Oh, dearie me. Uh, yeah, Richard Bobbin Stuffer is singing the theme song. If you're feeling kind of serious and life is seriously mediocre. Yes. Uh, Darren B says he loves the high life. And Mrs. B says it, it was just like that. Um, Mrs. B is, of course, cabin crew. Uh, Matthew Zulovitz has said hello from LJ Georgia. We love your work. We adored Sheena Easton in the 80s. Isn't she from Scotland? I think she might she be. She is. Right? She is from Scotland indeed. I love Sheena Easton. My boyfriend takes the morning train. Sheena Easton like sums up the 80s as well, doesn't she? Yeah. Everything about her looks 80s. Yeah, you need, you can either play a record in the background, have her on a TV, dress like her. Heather Crow has said a spurtle is what you stir your porridge with. Now, I think a spruttle was one of our prizes at Drag Bingo. Because I think it features in the book. Uh, or oh, the book that uh, Glenda wrote. Glenda Young. Young. About the Twelvises. Yeah, about Murder an Elvis the... convention. Murder, Murder, at the hotel? Murder at the Grand. Murder at the Grand. Uh, and it's set in Scarborough. And, I th- and she supplied a spruttle. Who, who, who won it... that prize? I can't remember. Who won it? I can't remember. But they um, won. They won the book and... They won the book and the spurtle. Because I think we had to shout to Stephen Donardo to ask what a spurtle was. And he knew, didn't he? He did indeed. Let's have a look. Alan's number two is... <laughs> I love Subo. I actually... I'm, I'm not being funny. My name is Susan Boyle. <laughs> I love that. I think she's got a beautiful voice. Um, I went through... You know, I go through these phases of being obsessed with people. And she was one of them. So I, to, I watched those documentaries on her. Um, uh, Martin has just said the book we were trying to think of was called Murder at the Sea View. Yeah. Um, and um, the, oh, I watched this documentary where she was trying to get, she was getting ready for a live show. And they're like, God, you can see, come on, you can see, you can do it. And we're like, yeah, you can see, you can think. But the nerves were just, oh, the nerves were just too much for her. And she had an assistant just to help her through these, like, these sessions where she just would lose it. And just get so upset and be embarrassed or shy or, you know. Um, but bloody, what well, cracking voice. Cracking voice. What a big... That, I mean, that's like one of those reality TV moments which, you know, can never be repeated. It just yeah. was like a magic bit of editing and manipulation of the audience and stuff. But brilliant. A one-off. And, you know, I think she still lives in, a, in the same house she grew up in. My name is Susan Boyle. Welcome to my house. And I even watched <laughs> the documentary of... Um, the Susan Boyle musical. 
Which Will, they, Will which, Venus says, lovely new hair she's wearing there. Yes, yeah, A little hair. bit of shade from Will. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was, um, oh, I can't remember what the actress's name Elaine is. Elaine C. Smith. That's it. Elaine C. Smith was playing her. And then they had, um, they pro- sort of didn't promise, but they said to everyone. Nibbles and bubbles are going. Bye. Bye-bye. They'd say, um, oh, you know, every night Subo will appear and perhaps sing a song at the end. And I think she did about sort of 60% of the shows where she appeared at the end and the audience was Oh, really? In, in the uh, the musical? Yeah, she'd appear at the end. Oh, super. Obviously, she couldn't, she, couldn't make, she couldn't make every single one of the tour, but... Um, Do you remember she then did, like, Britain's Got Talent All-Stars, and I don't think she did very well either. No. But she was absolutely devastated. She didn't win. Well, she should have won, but the... the um, the press turned on her. They like they do like milkshake duck. They turn on you. And, I think uh, I even think she went just into therapy after that. They she was just build like, you up and then they knock you down. But um, yeah, I love Subo. I love Subo as well. We got we had her album, didn't we? Actually, back in the day. I still have got that. I've, she's on my iPod. Is she really? Yep. Yeah, wild ho- um, horses is lovely. My number one. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh no, Gabrielle Chassis is talking about. Um, Sheena Easton was in the produ- a musical The La Man of La Mancha playing Aldonza. Her Scottish accent came through, but she was great. And uh, Martin Hyde says, check out Tom Ball. He's the male version of Subo. I think he's the favourite to win American... Uh, the world idol. World, American what? Britain, the world's got talent. Britain's got talent. America's got talent superstars or something like that. My number one is... Is that your number one, a cheese bloody pie? Oh, macaroni pie. Look at it. Just look at it. It's better than Subo. It's better than Hazel McWitch. It's better than Fran and Anna. So just the thought of popping macaroni in a pie is like the work of the gods. Do you know what I think think we should do? We should ask um, the lovely Stephen DiNardo (laughs) to wear his kilt one night. (laughs) Going to pop the Eat Me Cafe. He's going to come out and feed you macaroni pies. To make me a macaroni pie. He's going to feed me shortbread <laughs> with Subo one in the background. <laughs> well, the Eat Me had a, uh, a Hogmanay night. I was just away, wasn't I? I tell you what, guys, if you have another Hogmanay night next year, we'll come and dress as Anne and Fran <laughs> and li- lip sync. Fran and Anna. Yeah, Fran and we'll Anna. We'll do some little songs for you. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Martin Garten Spencer says, It's a shame that I'm a veggie because. You can get a lasagna pie in Aberdeen as well, which is, I think, just as it says, lasagna in a pie. You can get um, everything, anything in a pie, can't you? Anything can be a pie. Uh, the Seven Network says, I think it's based on a scotch pie, judging by the pastry. I think it is. Honestly, you can get them in, like, everywhere. You can get them in Tesco's in, in Scotland. Um, yeah. Oh, Carl Sutton, 76, has just said they sell macaroni pies in Morrison's. Where, though? In Scarborough? Is that in Scotland, though, uh, Carl Sutton? We have a Scottish um, selection of pies in Aldi. You know, like the Scotch pies, um, minced beef pies, but, but not, not macaroni. Will Venus is singing, I dreamed a dream of macaroni pie. Jason Darcy fancies a Scotch egg. Oscar D says he can get them in Greg's. Not in our Greg's. Not here. I'll, um, have, to, I'll, have, to get, I'll have to get me... Uh, me, me, me crack on and get you get you some made. <laughs> what do you mean get your crack on? Get cracking on. <laughs> Getting stuff in. Get the right ingredients in. Here we go. And drum roll for Alan's number one. Alan's number one is this pair of Bobby Dazzlers. Well, we wouldn't be here tonight, would we? Celebrating it without these pair of Bobby Dazzlers. Cheers to them both. That is, of course, that is the lovely Paul McFarlane and his beautiful wife Diangela. And um. Two of the best singers that's come out of Scotland, yeah? Yes. Oh, uh, what a beautiful soul Paul is. Um, a, like a heterosexual man that I would most probably be fearful of if I saw him in a pub without realising what a beautiful soul he is. Just shows you that you can't judge a book by his cover because he is the most gentle, kind giant that mm. I've ever met. And uh, yeah, what a lovely chap. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful company. Uh, great sense of humour. Yes, um, wicked sense of humour. Yeah, and we we love you both. Love you both so much. Ryan P says we say Aldi posh. How do we say it? Aldi. 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 Uh, <laughs> Paul's roaring now. Oh, is he crying? He says we've gone. 
Um, Christopher Johns Barrymore. Hello, my friends. I missed you both so much. Hello, Christopher Johns. Passing the tissues to Paul. Get your capital letters out and send him a cuddle. Ryan P says we say Aldi with an O. Aldi. We do. We don't say Aldi. Uh, Marilyn Aldi. Towie says, have you tried a battered Mars bar? No. Um, I hear they'll be doing battered cream eggs. Well, well, I, I think they chip, do them just around the corner. Our chippy actually does a deep fried chip butty. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, and you can do a deep fried cheese and chip butty. Um, but the chippy, uh, the one that's called Carol's Place on the corner, does deep. I think they do deep fried cream eggs. They do lots of deep deep, deep fried, fried bounties. Things. Deep fried Mars. We have tried, to, I've tried a Batters Mars bar mm. in uh, I. And I had a and I had a battered pizza. Oh, you did do one of them little baby ones. Yeah, in uh, from the chippy in I. I think it gave me the irrits. <laughs> I think it would, wouldn't it? Caroline Ibbotson says, um, "I like Mars bar on toast." Oh, very nice. I melted, I guess. You, you can buy, I think, Mars bar spread, can't you? Tell people how I like my Mars bar. Oh, chopped up little pieces. <laughs> With a, with a glass of milk, but not a full glass of milk. <laughs> a little slice, cut it into slices, and bring it me on a little platter. Um, I, was, I missed something there. But David Moore says, "When we say Aldi, we make it sound like Waitrose." <laughs> Paul says, "Have you tried Pizza Crunch?" Oh, I don't no. know what a Pizza Crunch is, Paul. No, I'm I'm wondering whether that's a pizza pressed into something then fried. All right. Oscar D says I want a pizza crunch. Oh, I've seen sure. si- Simply Sarah, the chef on the internet. She does something called something crunch. Don't call her a chef. And she, I think <laughs> she's, it's crunched down cereal and she presses something in it and cooks it. I can't remember what it is. There we go. Silla Black. Uh, Carol Nibbertson is telling Silla Black um, it's delicious, melted ice, uh, Mars bar. Heather Crow says Mars bar vodka is easy to make and easy to drink. Really? So you sort of put vodka and a marked bar together I don't know I've because uh, I've told people about uh, dishwasher I think I was telling Martin and Stephen about dishwasher vodka yeah where you put like sweets into vodka wrap it up in cling film and then put it in the dishwasher on a cycle yeah and the heat melts what's inside it and you end up with a flavoured vodka mm. um, <laughs> Darren B has just said unbelievable that's how I have my Mars bar Jamie cut up with milk Really? Cut Isn't that funny? sliced. Oh, Darren, we'll have to meet at King's Cross for a little illicit liaison and cut up our Mars bars together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Paul. Mark. He's saying he's drooling considering battering. He's on He's on his Weight Watchers. Oh, he's having salad tonight, isn't he? Will Venus has said, it says a sweet casserole with Mars bar and marshmallow melted in the oven is absolute heaven. A casserole. Uh, Paul McFarlane says they make your pizza then batter it that's a pizza crunch yeah <laughs> um, so I hope you've liked our little um, our little uh, Scottish week there is our QR code so if you did want to send us a tip uh, that's it I know we've not made lots of videos recently but Alan is trying to keep the flag flying whilst I am jetting around the world yep I'm back in my ginnel pretending dresses a Northumberland detective this last week. We're doing our Vera, doing the Vera skit. Um, we have got stuff planned, but uh, yeah, you'll have we to wait. We just have to wait it. for you until you're back properly. Yeah, I'm off to I'm off to Norway next on... week. So there'll be no swinging something back next week. Saturday. There might be maybe like Thursday or Friday. We might pop up, but we'll be back two weeks time on a Wednesday. Yes, yes. And we are planning. Um, must be an Easter quiz, aren't we? Yeah, we're planning a quiz at some point, something online, something fun. Um, uh, Alan ASMR was brilliant, says Caroline Ibbotson. Um, Ryan P says, I need your help. I want one of those fancy names. What do you mean, Ryan? Fancy names. Um, Norway for Mot- what, says Christopher Johns Barrymore. Uh, I'm uh, working there. I'm t- training people in Norway. Uh, so I train people in... Um, their impact, presentation skills, impact, confidence, communication, that kind of malarkey. So I'm off there for that. So uh, I'm there from, I leave here Saturday. 
All right, and then I'm back on. Yeah, you're back on. Back Thursday. on Thursday morning, so we might pop up Thursday night, Friday night for some impromptu. Um, Just to say hello and show our faces. Yes, but we are. We have got. Um, I was out buying props yesterday, wasn't I? For yes, so we project. have got plans. We've got stuff planned, but we haven't. Um, we just haven't completed it anyway yet. We are going to have a lock in. So we've gone past nine o'clock. We like to sort of end at nine, but we did we did disappear for ten minutes. Um, so we're going to have a lock in. We will leave you as we always do with a finale from our favourite redhead, but not the Scottish one. <laughs> The set of Balamori, <laughs> or um, not not Balamori. Um, Paul's written Lulu. I love you, but I love Scylla more. <laughs> I'm very worried about dancing on gravel. You were worried about her dancing on gravel in capri pants, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, I already was. Martin Garten Spencer said the fact they don't have TV specials like this anymore is pure homophobia. I agree with you. Uh, honestly, I love it when uh, the Brian Rogers connection come out and do a little bit of a. a What's well, the in it? No, I don't think so. I think there was just um, a dancer that looked a bit like Sunita. David Moore, I used to really fancy Lulu back in the 90s. See, Lulu, again, like Sellers, it's just like a, the face of face of, of uh, retro yeah. land. I found, so I found lots of Lulu. So we might have to... I mean, she had her own There's show. still lots of like, Scylla. Like Scylla, she had her own show, didn't she? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heather Crow says, sitting on a, a car bonnet in a white suit is very brave. She was so gyrating when she gets the bonnet like. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed tonight. Uh, when you said redhead, I thought you were talking about Lucille Ball or Carol Burnett, lol. No, just Lulu. Lulu and Scylla. Either of them natural redheads? No. I Would you not think Lulu is? I don't think so. I'm sure mine, I don't know. I would have thought Lulu was a natural redhead. She's not proper red, though, is she? Is, she all... is Scylla not? I don't think Scylla is. I know she's not that shade of red, but... Oh, I don't we'll have to do ask. Know, I don't know. Dad, do you know? Back in the day, was Scylla a redhead when she was on the, the door of the cavern? We've... Uh, <laughs> news you know, I, love, I love you a lot. 
I've just seen what Nigel T. C. <laughs> you're laughing at the same thing. Nigel T. C. has realised where that was shot. Well, Lou, that gravel Lulu was bopping on. There's me saying it's about, um, take the high road. <laughs> Lock Lomond. Lock Lomond. And he went, no, that's the, uh, how did you say the that? The Beaulieu Motor Museum in the New Forest. And it's where Nigel and Neil's friends got married. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Chasse was worried about all those girls dancing in heels on the grass. I, know, I bet they pulled out all the sods. Like when, you know, when Julia Roberts has to go and kick them back in Pretty Woman. Oh, we've, got, we've got Nibbles here. Nibbles, popped Nibbles in. has popped in hello, on darling. his break. He is at work and he pops in on his break. He says, um, hello, guys. Miss being able to pop in um, in at your work. Oh, oh, hello, darling. You're right. Nibbles has got some glasses now. He has, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. You should have come in, uh, come around here, Nibbles. You could have tried on my... Pe- Look at those up there. My uh, my range. I'll tell you what, Nibbles, if you'd have gone glass shopping with us two, you wouldn't have been wearing those two pairs. <laughs> We've got you in some of these big, big ones. A nice big pair of red cat eyes. Uh, Christopher Johns Barrymore, is this woman still around? She sings beautiful. Christopher Johns, are you talking about Lulu? Or Sella? Um, so Lulu uh, sang the song To Sir With Love from the movie with Sidney Poitier, which I'm sure you would know of. I think you're from the States, if I remember rightly. Um, but Lulu, I think, was, like, famous. Um, she did a version of Shout. You know that? Well, you well know, isn't, she the, wanna shout. isn't she the original Shout? Uh, is she? I think it's a little girl, isn't it? I thought it was Lulu. Was it? Oh, you think it might be in, um, back in America? Yes, I think the original one might be um, a little black girl, I think. All right. I don't know. Can you say little black girl anymore? I mean it with all kindness. Um, Heather Crow says marri- she was married to a BG, was she? Oh, I, w- I wouldn't pile it past her. The toothy one. <laughs> and she had, um, she had loads of TV programmes, like... You know. So Christopher John Barrymore, yes, she is still alive, Lulu. You must find oh, her. Yeah. She's, she's still touring. She still looks um, fabulous. In fact, I think she was inside a large slice of cake and our version of The Masked Singer. She actually, oh, wish in the, oh, did she get kicked out? Kicked out week one. They always kick out the, the big ones, week one. I think, secretly, the big ones say, I'll come and do something. Well, let me, I'm not doing every I'm week. I'm not doing every week. Yeah. Um, it's like going Big Brother. Kick me out first. She was married to Morris Gibb, says Tracy Ann Cannon. Someone says they have the bald one. And Martin Hyde says, Heather Crow says the bald one. And Martin Hyde says a hairdresser. Um, Mel- Melanie went, my, my, my old man was at school with Lulu. It's sort of like, that's what you hear in pubs, don't you? You can only hear above the hubbub. There we go. Hey. Martin got and Spencer. She married John Frieda, the celebrity hairdresser. Oh, yes. I remember that. Uh, Paul McFarlane says, Lulu also sang with Take That, the song Relight My Fire, which was in like 93, I guess. 93, 94. Married to Maurice Skib. Uh, yeah, Christopher Johns, look up Lulu. She has got a great, a cracking voice. Um, she's in Ab Fab. You must have seen Ab Fab. Absolutely fabulous. She's in uh, a scene where Adina's trying to impress her in a posh restaurant. And she goes, champagne for Lulu. And um, I think Britt Eklund's in the same scene. And then Lulu pops up loads more in the later series. Um, also, Filippo says that um, his uncle went to school with Lamar. <laughs> We'd love to know. who, <laughs> What spurious connections to celebrities do you have? So, like, that your mum used to work with or... Uh, your uncle used to go to school with or your next door neighbour used to date. So spurious, spurious connections to celebrities. Um, Darren Bramley, the GMTV floor manager, Robbie Rogers, used to run Lulu's fan club. <laughs> Christopher Johns Barrymore, I love Petula Clark also. Oh, we love pet, a bit. Of, love bit Alan pet. loves a bit oh, of pet. pet. Uh, Mad Abba fan has also said Lulu did the Bond theme, of course, Man with the Golden Gun. Man with the Golden Gun, yeah. And David Moore says I, the Isley Brothers sang Shout originally. Really? I thought it was a little like like a little black kid, and I can't remember her name. Like a like famously, that's how, I don't mean that to sound at all like um, wrong. Richard Bobbin has said that his dad almost ran over an old wisdom. <laughs> Exactly the sort of thing we want to know. Glad you didn't. Um, Dale Ibbotson. My mum used to be a carer and looked after David Hockney's mother. Oh. Because he painted his mother and dad, didn't he, in one of his paintings. Will Venus. A family friend lived next door to Sean Connery when he lived in Edinburgh. 
Filippo. Arnold Schwarzenegger came to my housing estate in the 80s. He was dating Miss Great Britain, who was from Wigan. <laughs> oh, lordy. Jason Darcy has completely got my brain and said, that's Millie that I'm thinking of, who sang My Boy Lollipop. <laughs> so, so Shout is original Lulu. <laughs> but I think I'm getting it confused because it's in Animal House. I think it's in the film Animal House. And I'm getting it, conf- I'm getting it twisted in my brain. Uh, here we go. The actress who plays Charity Dingle went to the same school as Mad Abafan in the year above. I, I did a scene with Charity Dingle. She was lovely. Um, Tracy Ann Cannon. I, wo- <laughs> I work with Paul <coughs> Paul Coyer's cousin. Do you remember Who's Paul, Paul Coyer? Was he like a really ropey TV presenter? I think he did Pebble Mill and I think he was married to Debbie Greenwood. Nigel says his mum danced ballroom with Lionel Blair. Oh, Nigel, that's a good one. That's not spurious. That's not spurious. That's... that's for a proper um, another another night of Wigan Sling. Look at later on, Paul Richard Bobbin Stuffer, Paul Coyer's wife is my mum's cousin, which I think is Debbie Greenwood. <laughs> I think I might be right. Um, here we go. Uh, Paul McFarlane says, "Alan, do you have the channel That's TV in Yorkshire? Take the high road is on every morning at nine a.m." No, but sometimes I'm not that early, love. We're actors, remember? Or, or I'm sleeping to Peggy. We sleep in till 11 and then have a black coffee and a cigarette in our dressing gowns in the garden, bemoaning the life. We don't smoke. Um, Darren B says, I've got Biggins on speed dial. And Lee Ludlow says, I'm thinking, oh, this is getting a tangled web now. We're thinking of Little Eva, who sang My Boy Lollipop. Little Eva's exactly who I'm thinking of. Um, Ryan P says you're about names. He wants to. He wants to find a good, fabulous name. Oh, so instead of Ryan P. Yeah. Oh, so people are well. What's um, Hetty Wainthrop? Maybe it should be something to do with Hetty Wainthrop. Yeah, look, play around with Hetty Wainthrop. Maybe it should be Ms. Wainthrop. How about Wayne, as in the boy's name, Wayne? Wayne Throp. Throp. Yeah, Wayne Space Throp. Um, here we go. There was a young black singer named Little Eva who sang Local Motion. Uh, Paul Coyer did Pebble Mill and Catchword. Uh, ne- Nigel TC says Neil used to be a nanny for two boys whose auntie was Leslie Garrett. Is that the opera singer. We love it. Little spurious connections. Uh, here we go. Uh, Joshua Spencer. When my dad did private security, he used to look after the cheeky girls. We didn't believe him when he went to see the cheeky girls and they recognised him and said his name in unison. Oh. Josh, have you seen me as, as the cheeky girls? You'd enjoy it. It's it's a, it's fierce. <laughs> um, okay, Nibble, see you soon. Back to work. Christopher Johns Barrymore. Do you both like Catherine Tate? She is a comedian. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I drop my names? Yep. Yeah. I was in a movie with Catherine Tate and I did, uh, yeah, I worked with her. And she the, was you lovely. You in the green room with her, weren't you? Yeah, she was really, ni- really nice, actually. She was quite nervous because it was her first kind of big, big film. Um, yes. Very talented, very funny. Very funny. Uh, yeah, I was, it's a film called Love and Other Disasters. It wasn't very successful. And, you know, here's another bit of info for you. It's the only, well, apart from Panto... It's the only job that both me and Jamie were auditioned for. For the same part. The same part. We both seemed for the same role. And um, when I got... He, when I, he was before me, I think, weren't you? Yes. And she was like, the casting director came on. Jamie, darling, how are you, my love? Come on in. And that's the door closes here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jamie comes out. She goes, are you next? I went, yeah. She went, what's your name? <laughs> I said, Alan Gibbons. She went, oh, you're not on the list. You better come in then. I think he just followed me there. I don't know what that's all about. Um, Got to go, says Marion Towie. Love to Alan Jamie. I'm off to that there London at the weekend to see a friend. Oh, have fun, my darling. Long story. He's from the 80s. I'll give you a clue. Don't take his coconuts. Alan will get that, but I can't think. Is that uh, see someone famous? Don't take my coconuts. Don't take my coconuts. Um... I've lost, I'm lost. I'm lost with it. Darren B. My daughter's flatmate's dad is a freelance butler and has worked for many celebs and royalty, including the Beckhams. Um, Ryan P. Ozzy Osbourne played in my local pub before fame two years ago. A band made from the original band he played with died and a huge black and red cross made of flowers c- 
came from Aussie. Oh, Aussie's back in the UK now, isn't he? I think so. Oh, he's come back not very well, isn't he? What's he paint throb? <laughs> I think Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Throp might be good. Or something around Hetty Wayne Throp. Wetty, wetty Raindrop? Um, I, I, I don't know if I've missed any. Paul Coyer launched Channel 4. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, Will Venus suggests that uh, Ryan could be called Hugh Bonney because Hetty Wainthrop loved Jew, Jew Bonnet. So Hugh Bonnet. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, more than Lindsay, my mum's cousins are Peter Gabriel's cousins. <laughs> I don't think any of my family's got any connection to anybody famous. Have you? Have you? Uh, I think we're related to the Duke of Wellington. <laughs> oh, you're joking. I think on my mum's side, we're, the Duke, we're descendants of the Duke of Wellington. Trust him to come over that. <laughs> mum, back me up. Back me up. Oh. If you're still there, Mum might have gone to bed because she's um, she's still a little weak after hospital, so she might have gone to bed. Um, My dad played Stuka with Patrick McGoohan. Is it him from the Avengers? Yes, I thought it was Stuart McGoohan then. Uh, Alan, best part of best audition was when he won the part of one half of the best double act in the world with Jay. Hey. Well, we did we did Panto together auditioned. <laughs> we were a bit royal, weren't we? We met the director at the uh, National Theatre in the bar, and we were really gobby, weren't we? Yeah, my mum's come back and says, yep, yeah, always been told that we're related to the Duke of Wellington. Yeah. And Lucy LaHughes has said, are we? That's a good one, nice one. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we did. We uh, met the director in the National, and um, yeah, we were a bit like, we've got to... Well, we've... when I, when I join your company, I will be wanting this... <laughs> I've got my own gowns. <laughs> we were we were a little bit like Miss Babs when she's um, in Acorn Antiques, or a little bit Nolly Gordon. And then when we arrived at the theatre, we were like um, uh, um, uh, Miss Painter in Personal Services. It's a mess. <laughs> a nice mess. Your mum has um, connections to famous people, didn't she? Eh? Didn't she? Who? I, mean, I thought you'd told me something about... can't remember now. My mum? Yeah. I think so. What met somebody famous, really? Yeah. What are them? Where are them two monkeys from? Only from Whole Fair. <laughs> Everybody in the whole had pictures of the monkeys in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> little, little monkeys, that big. Did Hilda Baker used to have two monkeys? Yes. Yeah. I'm getting them confused then. So you think we'll met Hilda Baker? Old <laughs> Tracy Ann Cannon has asked, do you think we would ever do Happy Valley? And if so, who would be Catherine? I think, I think I'd be Catherine. I think you wouldn't you be the sister, the sort of the drippy sister who's a bit like, oh come on, now, Catherine, oh, come on, have a cup of tea and in, in Ginnell. <laughs> I'd definitely be the sister's boyfriend. Oh, we're only taking him. Yeah, you'd be him, wouldn't you? We're only taking him to see Tommy because he asked. I'm in bloody Nolly, you know. That was a great weekend for me, wasn't it? <laughs> um, oh yeah, you could be Catherine then, because you knew that sort of like. That sort of northern... Northern, like, get get it, kettle on. Yeah, there needs to be, like, sort of loads of little um, quips one after another. When she goes, um, my sister's an exotic, my brother went to Simon Germany, and that's me bloody for you, you're under arrest. <laughs> uh, Patrick McGowan was from Prisoner. Patrick McNee, McNee was from The Avengers. You see, I've had you a lot of rear. Uh... Christopher Johns Barrymore, what would you do if you both became really famous suddenly? We'd still be here. We'd still be in the Wigan Slingback. It'd just be a bigger room behind us. I tell you what, we were watching this thing the other day. I think it was somebody's blog. Blog and vlog. And they went to this um, cocktail bar. And they... How much oh, did they yeah, pay for in a London, cocktail? In that there, London. How much did they pay? 20? They were like ni- 19 quid a cocktail, I think. And they weren't, like, big. And I said... Maybe I, more, 24? It was about £25, pound, wasn't it? We worked out it would be about, to have two drinks, you'd be spending 100 quid. And I said, I tell you what, if I was rich and famous, I wouldn't be spending 25 quid on a bloody drink. Melanie Fairley says the bald gay bloke is hilarious. Melanie, Me? Melanie's called Alan. Come on, I thought you'd have known that by now. <laughs> what does she mean? <laughs> I'm not sure. From Happy Valley? Happy Valley. No. Happy Valley. Melanie, who do you mean? Who's the bald gay bloke? If it's not Alan... Um, Phil and Holly beckon for Darren. Um, 
So he's he's off. I speak to him. Someone was um, Darren. Someone was putting cling film on his tongue and painting with it on this morning. Oh, they do I some... thought of you and thought, oh, I bet Darren's they not do best. some stuff on there. I bet Darren's they? not best pleased. They're trying to <laughs> trying to break TV there, aren't they? <laughs> My dad says, if I got rich and famous, I'd buy my mum and dad a bungalow. Oh. Um. Yeah, but we'd buy ourselves a bloody bungalow. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't buy a bungalow. You love bungalows, don't you? We're such a nana. Um, we still wait for Melanie to tell us who the who the bald gay bloke is, and then we will most probably say goodnight to you all. I tell you what, peeps. If I tell you what I am looking for, I don't know whether any of you are uh, scouting charity shops out there is I'm looking for a, an old battered or broken speak and spell speak and spell yeah we should put a we'll put a request out on the Facebook as well someone might have one even, even if it didn't work it doesn't have to work um, I won't tell you what it's for but um, I'm looking for one Paul has said thank you from the bottom of my heart for tonight's birthday tribute I am so touched and overwhelmed Oh, you're welcome, my darling. Have a wonderful rest of the day and have a wonderful rest of the week. Happy 50th. And um, I mean, the 50th birthday is something you celebrate for the whole week. Love to... Uh, month. Andrew Chapman. Yeah. Who is... Um, birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Mark, whose birthday was yesterday. We don't want the painting, Darren. Um, the tongue painting. The man with the longest tongue. It's like we all knew what the... They were talk- they were getting at. Oh, I feel- There's a bit of filth behind it, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I feel a nolly of filth, yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was that Phil was like saying, well, I quite like the painting. It's quite good. Mm. And it was rubbish. Um, Oi, did you two get to read my script then, girls? Hashtag should have done. I've signed it. I've read it. I love Mona. I loved it. I loved it. Right, here she is. We need to talk. We'd love to do a reading. Let's get us online doing a reading. We'll get a couple of other actors to do the other parts. You're a very good writer, darling. Read. Yeah, honestly, we both very loved funny. it. Um... Speak and spoil, you mean. Uh, D'Angela's birthday is on Saturday. D'Angela, that's why you're waiting for the weekend. Oh, D'Angela, happy birthday for the weekend. Consider tonight. You can steal a little bit of tonight for you as well. We, we, we won't forget. We'll pop it on your timeline. Um, oh, thank you, Nigel and Neil. Don't you don't worry. It's fine. They're trying to trying to donate to give us a little uh, oh, tip, it's, but it's not working. It's all right, dolls. Uh, Carol Sutton says, I have my niece's old speaking spell in the loft. I'll get up there at the weekend. Thank you, Carl. Oh, That'd be Carl. amazing if you can find it. Um, Andrew Chapman is 57 tomorrow. He says, shh, but that's a wonderful thing to be proud of. Andrew's in uh, Ramsgate, isn't he? Is Andrew in Ramsgate? No. no. I don't think Happy so. birthday, Andrew, for tomorrow. Right, my lovely people, we are going to love you and leave you. Um... Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for... I'm going to show you my shirt. There's mine. Mine's got little tigers all over it. And Alan's is a Hawaiian shirt. Um, we are... We're not going to be around next, next week. week. We might do a surprise little raid. Um, but yes, no one says, no, don't leave. We have, we have to. It's gone half nine. We've got to um, sort ourselves out. Morvan Lindsay, I was also having trouble with PayPal to give a tip. Oh, we'll look into that and see if um, there's a problem. Um, all right, my loves. We will. We'll be back. We'll back be back soon, my darlings. Maybe next week. So have a, have a fun uh, weekend. Bob and Stuff are tri- t- trouble tipping here too. We'll oh, find out why the people can't mind. tip. We'll have a look. Um, and Diane, have a wonderful birthday on Saturday. Up, up there in Bonnie, Scotland. Um... We will uh, see, see you, you soon. soon. Bye, everyone. And who have you got to, to, who have you got to, to leave them with? Scylla!